everyone and a big 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 welcome to everyone joining us this is our first q a for the current masterclass we are doing so thank you so much for joining us i'm lisa shirley community manager for Formula botanica i'm joined by the gorgeous and lovely lorraine and beatrice if you'd like to say hello hi everyone good to see you thank you so much for joining us i can see the numbers going up and i can see all the countries coming in the chat so very excited to be here this evening hello everyone Hi, everybody. And yes, as um, Lorraine just mentioned, please do let us know where you're signing in from because we love to see all the countries around the world. We are an international community. We absolutely adore seeing where you're signing in from. Like we've got the UK, we've got America, Sidonia, Texas, Florida, South Africa. It is just incredible. And you'll find as you go along with us that you will make friends in this community as well for many, many years, which is always happening every time we do a masterclass with our students as well. So what we're going to do today, this is the first Q and a for our masterclass we are teaching thousands of people around the world to formulate so we're going to keep it simple if you've watched lessons one to three and you have a question about making your emulsion or what's going to happen with your cream that is why we are here today to help you and we have other q and a's as well in the future on sunday and next tuesday we'll answer more of your questions as well so we are going to cover absolutely everything with our q and a's and the lessons so do not worry about a thing and if you do have a question for us please Please ask us in the comments wherever you're watching from we have taken a couple from the facebook threads that we have been putting into our communities so we'll answer those and we will try and get to a question in this live as well but if we don't get to it in this live please don't worry because we will come back if you're watching the replay and we will try and answer it for you we'll be a truth and our lovely education team will come back and try and do it for you but how excited are we about the masterclass, rain this is just more and more people are just learning how to formulate discovering new things ingredients equipment and we are you know we're creating entrepreneurs and people in love with ingredients out there. It's so exciting, just so incredibly exciting. I mean, there are over 50,000 people taking part in this masterclass or roughly, I think we're almost there. It's incredible. I mean, we could fill a football stadium with a number of people <laughs> who are learning how to formulate in this masterclass. And I am thrilled for every single one of those people because I know how much formulation can mean to you because we've watched it happen over and over again with our graduates. And we just love teaching these. I mean, there's 40 of us, more than 40 of us here at Formula Botanica. This oh. is, you know, this is what really lights us up because this is where we get to teach the world to formulate. And it is so wonderful to see all the comments flood in all across social media, in the big group. It's just everywhere. On email, you know, our, our help desk support team is sharing all these tickets as well, going, oh, I had these lovely messages. It's yeah. incredible. So big, big thank you to everyone who's just saying hi, reaching out, talking to us, posting up today. You know, we want to see where you are in the world. So keep that coming. And thank you so much for taking part. Exactly. Thank you so much. And as you say, it's a team effort. The entire team is involved. And Beatrice, I know you do a lot of effort in the beginning stages. I kind of come towards the end. But what's it like when you're working on the masterclass and when you're seeing people discovering formulation for the first time? Well, it's lovely because I've been there as all of you. And it's so fun and, and lovely to learn a new skill. And please enjoy this masterclass because it's awesome. And that's a really good point, actually. Everyone is learning a new skill. And we have a lot of people saying, oh, can I do it? Can I not? You know, am I good? Can I learn formulation? And we're here to show you that you absolutely can. And we take you through the entire process and we promise you, you will have a finished formulation at the end of it. There you go. How exciting is that? You're going to make your own face cream. That's awesome. And that's why we're here tonight as well. Exactly. And I hope all of you have your workbook. If you don't, get your ticket, get your workbook, download it, download your ingredients. There we go. Down your supply guide. Order your supply kit as soon as you can because, you know, they might sell out. And we want you to get these ingredients so you can make your cream. Yeah. So thank you for all of your questions. We're going to get to it. We're going to go for about an hour. We do as many questions as we possibly can. But let's get started so we can hopefully get all of your questions answered. So this is a great one to start with because we've just uh, had lesson four and a lot of you have been making your emulsifier. So this person says, confused about emulsifiers. Are you saying I need one in every formulation I ever do? Lorraine, what do we think? 
It depends entirely on what the formulation is. So if you're making an emulsion, that means a cream, where you blend together oil and water, then yes, you typically need an emulsifier. I'm sure there will be some exceptions to that rule, but in general, yes, you need an emulsifier. If, however, you're making a balm, I've got one here from one of our graduates, and if you can see that, it's a balm, there's no emulsifier in that. If you're making a toner, that probably doesn't have an emulsifier in it. If you're making a face mask, that might not have an emulsifier in it. It depends entirely on what you're making. So if you're making an emulsion, and I explain exactly what an emulsion is in less than three of your masterclass, then yes, you need one. Great, thank you. Okay, next question. So can I use a thermometer that I have in my kitchen, Beatrice? Yes, if you're starting out and that's what you have, you can use your thermometer from your kitchen. But as you start to formulate more often, uh, it would be better to acquire a thermometer only for your formulation so you avoid contamination, across contamination from your food to your formulations and and vice versa. So yes, for now, that's okay. I think one of the important things to take away is that sometimes you just have to use what you have. Like this is all about getting you started, just getting you involved yeah. and discovering a love of formulation. So if you don't have the exact one that we say, just do just do what you can yeah you know when I first started out I would grab things in my kitchen but I was just mm -hmm. formulating for me I was testing if I was going to take those formulations and sell them to the public then yes I would invest in separate kit and equipment and that's yeah. absolutely what all of you should do as well but if you're taking part in this masterclass, you're not at that stage yet so just as Beatrice says just go and have fun and try and use what you have absolutely okay okay next question so from Jennifer, if I don't have a glass rod, can I use something else for the purposes of just getting it made? Kind of like what we just said, Lorraine. Yes, you can. I mean, you watch me use a mini whisk in the in the videos, in the lessons. I have watched people do this with a teaspoon as well. <laughs> it will make life easier if you do have one, but just, just try, honestly, and try and get a hold of one of those mini whisks. You can get them in cook shops, you can get them on Amazon, Honestly, they don't cost much. They're like a couple of dollars, a couple of pounds, wherever you are in the world, a couple of something. And uh, it's really, really simple. So don't worry too much about, about the equipment either. Great. Fantastic. And I'm seeing a lot of questions coming in asking about substitutions. We do actually cover that in lesson eight. We do talk a little bit about that because we get you thinking more about being a formulator. So don't worry too much about substitutions, but make sure you watch lesson eight because it's a good one. It is. It's my favorite. Okay. Okay, Sam. Sam says, I think I've whisked my emulsifier for a bit too long. It's thicker than what I saw in the video. Why? Uh, Beatrice, what would we say? Well, this could happen for various reasons, but sometimes um, if you acquire uh, the emulsifier from different suppliers, it can have um, very slight differences and you can have slightly differences in the textures in the texture as well but that's no problem if the cream is in one phase showing as one phase and not separating that's all right just go on with it and that's okay that, that that's no problem yeah okay great I suppose it's also possible that you maybe added a little bit more than you were planning to that could make it thicker as well um, mm. Just play around with it. Make another version. That's what we encourage you to do. Just try it multiple times. Yeah, there's no, there's no one out there that has made something right kind of first time and then that's it. There are always a couple of iterations, so just go for it. Um, okay, so Lorraine, this is one for you. So can you run this skincare as a business at home or what are the correct procedures you have to follow? This is a big question, but we'll just cover the basics as there is food, for example, in the kitchen and stuff like that. So what would we say to someone thinking about maybe creating a brand after they've fallen up with formulation? Yes, it is absolutely possible in most countries around the world. Um, 
and we have watched thousands and thousands of people do this. And so, I mean, we've had over 18,000, almost 19,000 students go through our award-winning online courses. Um, and and I don't even include the masterclass in that. We've taught over half a million people through all of our freebies over the years. And so many of them have started businesses at home. It is absolutely possible. But there are certain standards you have to meet. Um, good manufacturing practice is a big one. We'll talk about this later in the masterclass. We cover even more on this in the VIP ticket if you have a VIP ticket, because obviously we get bombarded with all these additional questions, which is why we've created the VIP. Um, typically, we do recommend that you maybe try and avoid the kitchen because like, if you're like me, I have two kids, I have a cat, we're a very busy <laughs> family. I wouldn't start a skincare business from my kitchen. I would never be able to meet the hygiene standards, but I could, for instance, carve out a space somewhere else in the house. And that doesn't have to be a big space either. We've watched graduates do it in teeny tiny little corners of rooms where you are away from food prep. So you're absolutely right to highlight that, but yes, it is totally possible. Great. Thank you. I'm just going to put this up from Courtney as well, who says, I am loving the masterclass and I'm highlighting this because I've seen so many comments in the groups and on Instagram and I wish I could contact every single one of you personally. But thank you so much, Courtney. You speak for a big, big, big group of people. So thank you. Thank okay. You. Beatrice, this is one for you. Kind of covers a substitution. Um, hello. So I asked in the group also. So I have distilled water to replace the hydrosol and GMS SE to replace vegetal. Do I do have glycerin and licorice extract? I think they're kind of asking a general kind of substitution thing. But what would we say to people who are thinking about substitutions? Well, we'll talk about substitutions in lesson eight, as mm -hmm. we already said. But uh, GMS SE is a totally different emulsifier. It's a different way of working with it. It has more. It is more sensitive to pH variations. So. We're sticking to vegetal for this masterclass, but we'll walk you through other options in lesson eight. Great. Okay. So Lorraine, one for you. This is from Patricia. I'm curious if you have a link for the digital thermometer you were using, Lorraine. I'm having a difficult time finding one with two readers on it. I actually saw a couple of people ask this. So thank you, Patricia. Oh my goodness. Well, I believe it should be on our Amazon storefront. So if you have your workbook, let me just grab it quickly. Your workbook in it on page or lesson two, which is page ah, on the spot here, 10. We've got our links to our Amazon uh, storefronts in the UK and the US here as well. You might be outside the UK and the US, in which case go and have a look at what it is and hopefully you'll be able to find it in your country. But hopefully it should be listed on there. Um, it was, I think, a, a kitchen thermometer, meat thermometer, it just has two probes on it. But don't worry if you can't find that exact one. There are many options out there and we have them listed on our Amazon storefronts. And one of those I'm sure will be absolutely fine for you. And if um, the wonderful Formula Botanica team who are in the comments could share our Amazon storefront links, that would be really, really helpful. Thank you. Okay, next question from Gwen. Gwen says, so the texture was perfect, but there are little beads that didn't emulsify. A second batch turned out well, but a bit too runny. Thoughts, um, Beatrice, or both? <laughs> well, if there are little beads, probably your emulsifier didn't melt very well. So you need to guarantee it reaches 75 degrees. So it melts. And when you're mixing your oil phase with the emulsifier, with your water phase, you need to ensure they're at the same temperature. Sometimes if you remove the water phase from the water bath before the oil phase, it can start to cool down. So these kind of things may happen. And the second batch turned out a little bit too runny. Well, that can happen. Try again. It, it's like that when we're beginning with need to try various times until we get uh, get a way of doing it. But go on and keep trying. It's normal to have variations in the beginning. Yeah, and have fun with it. You know, go yeah. and experiment. Treat it like a little experiment. I did this in the beginning as well. I'd go, right, I'm making a body butter and I'm going to use 60% shea butter and 65 and 70 and 75. And then I try all these different variations and then I try and figure out which texture I like best. So just treat it as a little experiment. 
Yeah, exactly. And I'm seeing so many comments of people that are, I've made their emulsifiers, they're watching every single lesson. So this is going to make all your questions shoot up. But let me know how many lessons you have seen. It's always interesting to know. Is it one, two, three, or four? Which number is your number? Okay, one for you, Lorraine. This is more kind of technical, but this is an important question. Okay, so unfortunately I had to go out of town. Will there be a repeat of the masterclass? Oh, big question. Um, of this one, not for the foreseeable future, no. We do teach masterclasses regularly, but this one won't be coming back for quite some time now. Um, so no, I think is basically the answer. But we will have a different one where mm -hmm. we'll be teaching you to make a different formulation at a later date. But I'm, that's what I'm giving away at the moment. But also a lot of people ask questions like this because they have the impression that it's live. It isn't live. You can always go back and watch the lesson. So you don't need to be there at two o'clock UK time every day. You can always go back and watch them when you can. And they're only about 10 to 12 minutes. I think most of them are 10 minutes. So, uh, you know, try and find that time if you can. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to also say, if you don't have the ingredients and you're not formulating along, that is totally fine as well. So many people take part in the masterclass and they don't make the formulation. They just want to watch it and see for themselves if it really is achievable and then maybe try it at a later date. So if that's you, that's totally fine as well. Just soak it all up. Mm -hmm. And then at some point later on, you might go, I'm going to do this now. I'm ready. So that's cool too. Exactly. Right. Okay. So Moses, Moses M says, uh, where do I put my emulsion and should it be in an airtight container? Lorraine. Um, well, you put, well, when it's finished, you will put it in a jar or a bottle and you'll watch us walk through all of that in lesson seven. In the meantime, if you want to know what to do with it, we recommend that you keep a batch in the fridge uh, in between the lessons, because normally you would sit down and emulsify, uh, make the whole emulsion in one go. Um, and we even have an FAQ on this in your study area. So if you scroll down the study area and you go to FAQ number five, there's a question there on where do I keep my, should I keep my emulsion in the fridge in between lessons? So go and watch that one because I explain all of it in there. Great. Thank you. And just want to shout out a few people. Uh, sometimes I can't see your name. Sorry, but I've seen loads of fours. Maruka is on three. Um, someone's called In the Kitchen with Mama. They're on number three. Crystal's on three. Thank you so much. You, um, We have four lessons available for you to watch. And it is good for you to watch them when they're released. But we do appreciate sometimes people get busy. But thank you so much. That is absolutely great. So Mantra Girl says, how do I find the recordings? So Lorraine, this is another technical question. I'm going to come to you for this one. They are all in your study area. So if you've signed up for your ticket, then in the email that you received, and in fact, after the next page you went to for your ticket, mm -hmm. it will take you to your study area. So bookmark that page because every single lesson will go up there and it will stay there until May 2nd. So just keep that date in mind because after that it will all be gone and you can't download the videos. You don't get to keep them. You don't have lifetime access. We put an awful lot of effort into this. There's 40 of us sat here teaching this. So it's just for these few weeks. So make sure you get into your study area now and go and catch up. I mean, each lesson is only about 10 minutes. You can zip through them in no time. And mantra, everything is there. You've got your supply guide, your ingredient list, and most importantly, your workbook, which is your masterclass Bible. So yes, please do go and get that as soon as you can. Okay, so next question from um, Sally. This is for you, Beatrice. Can I start using my cream after lesson three? If so, what would it be used for? So, well, you can test it to see if you like the texture, if you like the skin feel. But remember that the cream is not ready. We still have active botanicals to it. We we'll still preserve the cream. So, you can test it to feel to feel it but remember it's not the finished cream yet yeah we've still got lessons to go so i know everyone gets kind of excited and they want to kind of like jump ahead but the reason why we have split it up is so we can educate you slowly and just give you the information that you need and so it goes in you understand why we're doing the things at adding botanicals why we are preserving it and what we use in the right way as well okay so beatrice another one for you from mary how did you calculate the amount of emulsifier you required for this emulsion? So how did you figure out um, the entire formulation? Well, when we're planning a formulation, usually we use the recommended usage rate from our suppliers. So for, for vegetal, it's 
between three and six percent. And as we wanted a thicker cream, we went to six percent. And also, we are not using other thickeners, so we decided to use this ratio. So it worked for this formulation. So that's Great. how it worked this time. And it's just all about having fun formulation at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, I'm just putting up this comment from Run Away. It says, I've been making bath and body products for my business for a while, just tweaking other recipes. Can't wait to do my own. And we, that's what we see. We see so many people who got a little bit excited, get a little bit of a taste, and then go on to do great things with formulation. So thank you so much. Yes, you are in the right place, definitely. And even this week, I've been sent several boxes of products from new graduates who've yeah. launched. So we watch people go. They all start. All of our graduates start with this masterclass, go through it, enroll with us, take the courses, launch their brands and to start to create their own formulations. And that is incredibly exciting to watch. So you're absolutely in the right place. Exactly. And, you know, we can't do this all the time. So I'm going to go to this question from OP and Lorraine, I'm going to head to you for this one. How often do we have these masterclass? We don't have them all the time. So this is a very good time to be here having fun with us. But what would we say to that, Lorraine? Um, well, we teach something for free all the time, is what I would say, first of all. So mm -hmm. come and immerse yourself on the Formula Botanica website, because there's always something going on there. Also, we have a blog with over 500 articles on it, filled with formulation, free formulation advice. I run the Green Beauty Conversations podcast, which I host. We've got over 150 episodes on there. There is so much free material there for you. And then Twice a year, we teach masterclasses as well. And this is the first one for 2023. And there may well be another one later in the year, but that is literally all I'm saying on it. We're not even going to be talking about the next one because we're in this one. And I want you to really enjoy this one. And, you know, our mission is to teach the world to formulate because formulation is so fun. It's so easy. It's so empowering. And I want to hear from everyone in the comments, you know, post up and tell me how formulation makes you feel. I want to see just a one word. How does it make you feel? Come and tell us. I'll come back and look at those. Okay, so Mand Mandy says, can I also purchase via by ticket for the next online course? I'm not quite sure what you mean by next online course, Mandy, but for this one, you can still purchase a VIP ticket. Um, you could do that quite easily, and there's loads and loads of goodies in there, and that will really get you excited and um off the starting gate with formulation. But yes, you still have the opportunity to get it. But for this one, I'm not sure what you mean by the next one. <laughs> okay. I think we don't think we've done this one. CB High Tech says, I'm going to start my skincare brand and its name is The Do Natural. I want to take help from your channel. Well, you're in the right place. You are yeah. absolutely in the right place. Absolutely. And I'm watching all those words come in. It's incredible. <laughs> Have you seen this? I'm going to ask a question and I'm going to head back to those words because <laughs> I'm going to lose my spot. Um, okay. So, okay, I'm going to go to Jane. Jane, does the type of oil you use affect the viscosity, the viscosity sorry, of your emulsion? Beatrice, what would you say? Yes, it does. Um, it depends on the oil, the viscosity of the oil itself. If you choose to use a butter, for example, you have a higher viscosity. So yes, it can change the texture of your emulsions. Great, thank you. Now I'm looking at a couple of these words. We've got relaxed, empowered, fulfilled, some people are cheating using more than one word. Intrigued, energetic, <laughs> empowered seems to be the word of the day, which is what we love to hear because empowering yeah. you through a love of formulation is exactly why we're here. So we are obviously yeah. doing the right thing and you're obviously getting the right result from it. So thank you so much, everybody. I love it. Amazed and powerful and excited and fantastic. Oh, it's so good. So many empowered. And I know. Powered. Everyone seems very <laughs> positive as well. Yeah. Okay. Next one. So is a whisk or a mini whisk better for this emulsion? Lorraine, how do we feel about whisks? Um, it depends how big the batch is that you're making. So you're watching me use this teeny tiny little whisk because I'm making a teeny tiny little batch. I mean, it's 100 grams. So um, you, if you put a really big whisk, like today, it's my son's 10th birthday. I've been making him a cake. I need a whisk because there's a lot of batter in there. With, it's different with the cream that we're making. But imagine that you decide to make a face cream like this and sell it and you scale it up, then you might actually invest in something more handheld, like a handheld mixer, or you might eventually scale up to something bigger, like an overhead stirrer or a homogenizer. But 
If you're taking part in this masterclass, you don't need that yet. Just stick with the mini whisk for now. Make small batches. Have fun with it. As I said, they don't cost much. Even if you don't end up using it in your formulation business in the future, I'm sure you'll find a use for it in your kitchen. Exactly. Uh, and Runaway's actually come back with another question based on their last thing. I'd go to you for this, Lorraine. Is there a way to take an individual course on a particular subject? How um, does Born Botanica kind of tackle that? So we have uh, big diplomas that teach you how to formulate skincare or hair care. We have our advanced diploma. We have our business diploma. We have niche certificates in different topics, such as cosmetic preservation using natural ingredients, stability testing, that sort of thing. Um, generally, we tend to teach you an entire course on how to formulate because there are so many different facets to it. So if you are interested, and obviously we would love to welcome you into our massive community, then do come and have a look at our website at formulabotanica.com. Absolutely. Yeah, and just to mention, we also have the lab, which is a mm -hmm. subscription website, which uh, and we publish each month, a new mini lab, which are mini courses about different topics that are trending. So we also have this. Yeah, exactly. that's a very good point for people who are already formulating. And we have, you know, thousands of members in there. It's a great way of staying up to, to date with the latest trends. But we know that the majority of people in our masterclass aren't there yet, which is why at the end of the masterclass, we'll be opening up enrollment for our International Organic Skincare Entrepreneur Program, which uh, we're not even going to go into right now because we're here to talk about lessons one through three slash four. Exactly. OK, so Beatrice. From Crystal, uh, can you overmix your emulsion? Well, if you're making a small batch and mixing it uh, with a mini with a mini wix, it's not likely you overmix your emulsion. But if you're using a homogenizer or something that has a stronger power, a stronger mixing power, then yes, it is possible, and you can ruin your batch. But uh, we chose this formulation because it is very easy and it's not easy to overmix it or ruin it in any way. So don't worry about that now. Okay, great. Yeah. And also, like we said, just try again. If you do think you've overmixed it and the texture isn't quite what you were imagining, just make something else. So, you know, make it again and do something different. Make sure you write it down because if you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. That's what yeah. we like to say. Yeah. My first ever emulsion that I made, I, I used a, um, a handheld device and I overmixed it and it ended up like scrambled eggs. So if it does happen to you, don't freak out because it happens to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why yes. we, st we keep it super simple in the masterclass just for that reason. Great. Um, from Sasha, this is good just to remind everyone, Lorraine, how long do you have before the videos are taken down? Until May 2nd at 4 p.m. UK time. So not midnight. It will be 4 p.m. here UK time when the whole thing gets taken down. Um, unless you have a VIP ticket. But that's all I'm saying on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think this is Lady. 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 Um, what's the best type of jar to use to keep your emulsion in and maybe your cream? Is there any kind of jar we specifically recommend? Beatrice? No, you can use uh, small jars for cosmetics and nothing very fancy. So, yeah, uh, just Thanks. ensure that it's um, a packaging where you can, uh, that's suitable for um, the viscosity of your emotion. But besides that, there's nothing too specific. <laughs> yeah, and you'll right. want to talk more about this in lesson seven yeah, as well. Exactly. Fabulous. Okay, we've got a lovely comment from Meeks who says, this mask class has been so amazing so far, I'm going to enroll for sure. So thank you so much. We we really do it just to spread a love of formulation around the world. And, you know, people have these dreams of, you know, creating formulations or creating brands, the whole thing. So we just want to help you on that journey. So thank you so much for that comment. That's lovely. Okay, next question. Okay, so Christy has a specific query. She says, I'm curious how this lotion would hold up in hot weather. Hot weather. I live in Ohio and currently make face cream body butters, but I only sell or shit in cool weather. I can't even go to the local farmer's market. So how does the temperature of the room um, affect our emulsion? Lorraine? 
It depends entirely on where you are in the world, which obviously Christy has highlighted. I can tell you it's not that warm here in the UK. Yeah. Um, it, you have to undertake cosmetic stability testing in order to make sure that your formulation, in this case, your emulsion wouldn't separate. Um, and that's something that we don't cover in too much detail in this masterclass, although we do touch on it in the VIP ticket, because this is one of those questions that people always ask where they want to go over and above what we teach in the masterclass. Well, that's why we teach an entire course on stability testing. And what you would typically do with a lotion like this is you would put it in a little oven that you would have in your formulation lab and you'd keep it at a really low temperature for a prolonged period of time so you speed up real world conditions and you can see how your formulation holds up and if it doesn't hold up then you need to tweak the formulation and go back and if it does then it passes stability testing and can go on to the next checks and balances that you would do before you might sell it fabulous um we have a question here i can't see the person's name but someone says, can you share the blog and podcast link, please? So if people um, helping out with the comments can do that and you can go and have a look at what we're up to and just see a little bit more about us. And as Lorraine says, we teach something new every week, if not twice a week, three times a week. It just seems there is so much for you to discover. So please do go have a look at those as you right. continue through the masterclass. And if you ever get lost, just formulabotanica.com. And there's a, a big button at the top that says blog and one that says podcast. So they're right there for you. Absolutely. As we mentioned the VIP, I see a few questions about the VIP. Yes, it is still available to the people asking, but we're not saying loads about it because we've got too many questions to go through. But if you are interested to go to your study area and you'll be able to sign up there. Do yeah. And if it. anyone has any tech challenges, just get in touch with us. Just come over to the website or reply to the emails that we're sending you about the masterclass and just say what your problem is. Describe it and we'll help you. There are so many people in our help desk and they're turning around thousands of tickets and doing their very best to support you. So just reach out exactly okay so Lydia says okay so my emulsion has separated what do I do if my emulsion separates Beatrice try again and don't be sad about it it happens especially <laughs> when you're starting out but that's okay and keep trying and um, ensure that you're following um, all the methods and Continue trying, try again, and you you get the the hold of it very soon. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. Just you know, give it a go. It's all about kind of just taking part and getting started. And I would also suggest maybe keeping that one as well. Like, don't throw it away. Like, keep yeah. it. Just so you can compare them, and it's all about learning and having fun with it. So you can learn a little bit yeah. along the way. Yeah, and yeah. write it down because it's important to have notes so you can try to find out what happened this time. Um, ensure you you have uh, both your beakers at the right temperature too. So that's important. Great. Yeah. And don't don't stress about it. Everyone has failures. It's the yeah. same with cooking. You know, I've made dishes over the years where I've gone, God, that was disgusting. Why did I make that? And, you know, you have to go through these processes to get to the stage that you go, okay, now I've made this beautiful emulsion. I'm really happy with it. Great. Fantastic. Okay, I don't think we've covered this one, but you'll tell me if we have. Okay, so how many creams can we make the ingredients in my supply kit? Lorraine, from Depends Lindsay. Depends who you've bought from, but typically uh, three. And that's also what's on your shopping list. So I'm just reaching over to get it. So there's a shopping list in your study area. You can download it on there. And it says we've recommended enough ingredients to make the face cream three times. Um, I've got a kit here by one of the suppliers in the UK, but we have suppliers all over the world, of course. This is from Aromantic, and they have sent through a lovely batch. Look at that. Formula Botanica Green. Go Aromantic. <laughs> and I've got enough in there to make the face cream three times. So it depends on the supplier, but typically three times. And I know we're going to get questions about where to find that. Oh. Sorry, I don't know what's going on there. I know we're going to get questions. So it is in your study area. All you need to do is go to your study area. You can download your supply guide, your ingredients list, and your workbook. And you can find the supplier, um, supplier that will be fitting to you. We have expanded it this year. We've done our very best to cover the planet, basically. So please do try. If you're in a certain area and you see the one that's closest to you and they don't have it, just go to the next one. You'd be surprised what Google can bring up if you just um, do a little bit of searching. So just please do your best. Okay. 
Facebook user, sorry, I don't know your name, but this person says, I don't know my formulation philosophy yet. I'm just going to go for it, hoping this is okay. So this person just wants to get started. What would you both say to this person? Of course, go for it. Have fun with it. Practice, have fun making your face cream. Try different things. Sign up for the VIP ticket if you want. Come and, you know, we've got a formulation book in there with lots of other formulations you can make. Don't worry too much about your formulation philosophy right now, but start to think about it. And that's why that's the first lesson in the masterclass as well, because I want it in the back of your mind the whole way through there. You're going, oh, well, actually I could do this, or this might fit really well with me, or there's this ingredient nearby that fits really well with my ethos. Just keep it in the back of your mind the whole time. And suddenly one day it will click, I promise you. Yeah, it's all about discovery yes. and just finding stuff. So Beatrice, yeah, what would you say? Yeah, um, I would say that your philosophy doesn't need to be something fixed in time. You can change what you think about it. Um, when I started out, I only wanted to use organic ingredients, and now I'm more open to naturally derived ingredients. So you can change how you think and um, try new ingredients. And well, what I would say it's experiment and find out what you like and have fun with it yeah that's the name of the game experiment so you've hit the you've hit the nail on the nail head the head there okay so kate says if an emulsion fails can it be reheated and re-whisk in the cool bath beatrice well it's not ideal but yes you can try <laughs> to do it but um it would be better to start again but if you want to try it, try and reheat it and re-whisk it, but you probably have a different texture, a different viscosity. So uh, consider it a test and not your final formulation. Great. And write it down. Yeah. Always. Write it down. <laughs> okay. So another question. So lesson three says to heat up the beakers to 75 degrees. I feel like the temperature changes a little. Is this okay? Um, Beatrice? Yes, it is. Um, no problem at all. Um, but you need to ensure that, that both your beakers are at around the same temperature, around 75 degrees. It's not a problem if it goes a little bit over uh, 75, like 77, 78, but try not to have um, less than 70, for example. You need to ensure that your emulsifier is melted so it can make its function to emulsify your product. Great. Okay, it's kind of an admin question, but we get this one a lot. So are we able to watch this live again, Lorraine? Yes. Of course you are. We will stay here on YouTube forevermore. So don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. It will also be linked on your masterclass study area. You will be able to come back and watch this. And even better, we have this awesome team member. I think it's Janet, who's in the comments. And she is also taking note of all the timestamps for all the questions. So we're going to have all the questions listed underneath the video afterwards. So you can revisit all of the bits whenever you need to. Absolutely. Okay, so this person's kind of thinking big, so we'll we'll see if we can answer this. So hello, I'm so happy to be part of this. Please, how long in journey do you have to blend your emulsion for a larger batch? For example, 600 gram batch, thank you. So what would we say to someone trying to think big quite soon in the game, Beatrice? Well, uh, for this emulsifier vegetal, you only need to emulsify it un um, until uh, the emulsion forms. After it forms, you need only to stir it until it cools down, but you don't need to mix it very um, enthusiastically, I would say. <laughs> so when we're um, emulsifying bigger batches, you probably, you're probably won't do it uh, uh, only with a whisk. You'll use a hand stirrer, um, handheld mixer, something like that. So you need to be careful to not over mix it. So just mix it until it forms the emulsion and then uh, just stir it until it cools down. Great, thank you. I'm going to highlight this question from Denise. Denise says, I had my formulation philosophy, but I'm having trouble with the name of the brand. I have one now, but I'm not so sure. And the reason why I'm highlighting this is because that is why you need a skincare entrepreneur mastermind group. There's just a ton of people, over 80,000 people in there talking about 
formulations brands what they want to do with their life with formulation so just go in there i think you might be a member of denise but if anyone is watching and they want to get advice and guidance from people it's a hub of just love of formulation so please do go in there and post up a question and ask people what they think and i promise you they'll give you an honest answer and your family and friends might not appreciate formulation but everyone in that group really does so it is the place yeah. to be the other thing I would say, because Denise, I think you might already be a Formula Botanica student, but correct me if I'm wrong, is we have our diploma in beauty brand business management, which is the business diploma at Formula Botanica. I lovingly refer to it as our Indie Beauty MBA. And there's a whole section in module two to help you choose your name. So if you are enrolled on that course, go and take that module as well, because it will really help focus your, um, your name, basically, and where you want to take your brand. Great okay i don't think we've done this one um should this emulsion have a smell mine has a slight scent just not to make sure i'm doing the right thing lorraine uh yes because you're using a scented hydrosol in there so you're using orange blossom neroli hydrosol i've got some here in my my masterclass kit this is one from aromantic and it smells amazing it smells absolutely heavenly i love this so much um so yes it will have a slight scent because of that the vegetable oils that we're working with it's almond oil isn't it in this one um sorry it's been a long day it also will have a, a slight fragrance and when you start to add in your essential oil which we're going to use in episode five which comes out tomorrow then it will have even more of a fragrance so yes don't worry about that great okay so I've seen a couple of people ask about thermometers. So Benedicta says, I do not have a thermometer at the moment. Can I do without? Beatrice? Mm, ideally not, because you need to ensure the temperature of both of your phases, the oil phase and the water phase. And thermometers are, you can find various types and some are very cheap. So it, you should find, um, find thermometers where you are. So try to get hold of one so you can make your emotion and guarantee it's uh, it's okay and you're doing all the process the right way. Yeah, you can yeah. get them so easily in cook shops, online, you can get them anywhere really. So don't worry, you don't have to have any fancy sort of specific thing for cosmetic formulation. Just go get a cookery thermometer and you'll be fine. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Kate says... <laughs> Oh, can I just check this, Beatrice? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. great. Okay. Okay, let me just see. This is from Angela. Are we able to have lifetime access to this free class to come back to and following along and haven't bought the chemicals on supply list yet and some other tools? Lorraine, we've kind of answered this, but just to make sure everyone's aware. No, sorry. We don't, do, we don't do lifetime access for anything at Formula Botanica because that is a big, big promise. We have 40 staff sat here teaching this masterclass for 50,000 people at the moment. It's taking a huge amount of effort. Um, so no, I'm afraid we don't offer lifetime access to our, our freebies. We don't offer lifetime access to our courses either because that's just the way we work. Um, so please make the most of it right now. Also, when you have lifetime access to things, and I know this because I do sometimes, you don't go back to them. And I don't want this for you. I want you to become a formulator. I want you to make that face cream. I want you to make the most out of it. So take action now and push yourself to, to take part. You can obviously download the workbook, which I've got right here. And I know Lisa's going to hold hers up as well. <laughs> Go and download your workbook, take all the notes you need in there, and you can refer back to this over and over again to make the face cream. Because once you've watched the, um, the lessons and you've taken your notes, you'll absolutely be able to do so afterwards. So yes, just come and take part now, soak it all up and yeah, try and, try and follow along if you can, but don't worry if you can't, just try it at a later date. Exactly. And as Lorraine says, just write it down, download your workbook. The next couple of lessons are going to be so fun. We start to talk about botanicals and start to make your cream actually come to life. So just do what you can, have fun with it and make sure you watch it as when you can and just follow with the lessons and you'll end up with a gorgeous sea buckthorn face cream at the end of it. Okay. So Vic says, I could only get a jewelry scale that goes down to 0.03. Is that okay, Beatrice? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. In fact, that's 
um, more than I can find here in Brazil. So <laughs> yeah, if you can measure out uh, the amounts of ingredients for your formulation, that's totally fine. That's okay. Great. Okay, Sasha, I'm not sure about this one, but let's uh, let's go for it. Let's see. Sasha says, should we use other measure equipment when adding the products? Lorraine, do you understand that one? Um, I I presume you might mean things like jugs. Um, basically, we want you to measure in weight. I think that's the really important thing here, not in volume. So, for instance, as I said, I was making cakes earlier. Um, it's often you're asked to add milliliters or if you're in us possibly fluid ounces we don't work with the imperial system in formulation by the way we work in the metric system but um you need to be working in weight because it's far more specific and i'll give you an example a few years ago i actually even wrote a blog post on this i'm sure someone in the team could share it in the in the chat i am um, i compared all these different weights of essential oils and i weighed them all i weighed out 20 drops of each oil because of course you've got all these blogs online that say 20 drops of essential oil is the same as one gram this is totally incorrect by the way so i weighed out all these 20 drops of different essential oils and they were all different weights so that's why we weigh by weight and not by volume so i think that's what sasha's probably talking about but please feel free to elaborate further sasha i hope that answers the question <laughs> thank you okay a lot of people still ask you about substitutions, substitutions which we will cover in episode eight, so don't worry. It is good to see so many people thinking ahead and thinking, that, you know, they just want to get started, and we do really appreciate that. And the other thing I would say about that is if you want to skip ahead already, have a look at lesson eight in your workbook, because we already list some options in there. But don't worry too much, because, yes, we're going to cover it all in a matter of days. Exactly. And in talking about covering things, um, Spirit of Wonder asks about essential oils. Are they active ingredients and do they work in such a small scale? We are going to talk about ingredients as we go through, but please do look at our um, blog post. Just go to our site, just type in essential oils, and we've got blog posts talking about them. We've got formulations. We do cover things like this. So we do have a lot of research already out there on the internet for you to discover. Okay, next question. Can't see the person's name, but this person says, can I use any glass bowl in my kitchen? Does it have to be something special? No, Lorraine? No, just use whatever you can um, that is clean and hygienic. And yes, a, glass, <laughs> a glass bowl would be absolutely fine. The only thing I would say is if you've got two beakers and you put them in a glass bowl, then they'll probably be at an angle. So just be aware of that, that if you're heating them on the stove, you might want two glass bowls over a pan. Um, or you might just want to put your beaker directly in a pan of water. So um, that should be fine. Yeah. Great. Or if you don't, I'm sorry, I completely got that wrong. So if you have <laughs> not using um, a beaker, but you're using a glass bowl, that's absolutely fine as well. I've, I've actually got the thread open that we posted in the Facebook group today. I'm just going to take this question. Um, so someone had a question about sanitizing their tools. So how can they sanitize their tools and the area that they're working? Because I know a couple of people uh, always consider this when they're making it, which is a, is a good question. What would we say, Beatrice? Well, you have to wash your equipment with hot soapy water, as you would with um, your kitchen stuff, and let it dry very well. Wash it, uh, rinse it with water and let it dry. And then just sanitize it with 70% alcohol or isopropyl alcohol solution. The same for for your table or the place you're working in. So that's very simple, nothing very fancy. You don't you are not working in a sterile environment. We don't need sterile environments for uh, for cosmetic formulation. So just sanitizing it's more than enough. Yeah, great. And you watch me show off the isopropyl alcohol in lesson two even. So if you haven't watched lesson two, go over to the study area and watch it right now. Because I've just got some in a bottle uh, where I just spritz it out on the table to wipe it all down. Great. Fantastic. Okay. So Lorna says, and a kind of a substitution question, but just to remind everyone, can I use something else other than sweet almond oil? I have avocado oil spare. So Lorraine, you're nodding. We're yes. saying yes. Of course you can. <laughs> absolutely. And avocado oil is absolutely beautiful. So go for it. And I think the point is that we've kind of been saying throughout this live and, you know, through our uh, groups and engagement in the masterclass as well, just just have a go, just try and do it. If you don't have something that we say to get, just have fun with formulation, have fun in the kitchen and just see what you can do. 
Yeah, and talking about avocado oil, you probably uh, get a light green color that's very beautiful too. So experiment with it. Nice. Okay. So Steffi says, I only have 50 grams of hydrosol. Can I just use a little less of the other ingredients? So Beatrice. Well, we're already uh, formulating a small batch, which is 100 grams. Of course, you can try smaller batches like 50 grams. So you would um, use half of all your ingredients. But um, you have um, probably a hard time to weigh your ingredients. So that's why we recommend um, formulating 100 grams for small batches but if that's what you have go on and try it just be very careful while weighting your ingredients okay great um i'm not sure if we can answer this but let's see if we can okay spirit of wonder says i have just one more question is it okay to use a double boiler do we know what this is no i spirit of wonder we oh lorraine might know <laughs> um <laughs> I think double boilers are those, I think I've seen them for cooking. Um, possibly, I mean, basically you want to be able to put a, a receptacle of some kind, like a beaker in a water bath where you can control the temperature. So if that's what you have, and if that works for you, then try it, just have fun with it and see if it works. Okay. Tiona says, best place to research ingredients where would we send someone Lorraine, if they want to research and just uh, get a little bit more knowledge formula botanica all the way i mean this is why people enroll with us we have when you enroll with us one of the first uh, documents that you'll access is our huge ingredients directory which beatrice put together uh, so she's nodding over there she knows i mean it's about <laughs> 150 pages long it's got just hundreds of different ingredients in there it's amazing. yeah i was counting it uh yesterday i think we have uh, 162 ingredients there so there are brief profiles but there are lots of contents in there yeah it's and incredible yeah it's, it's incredible it's a huge document it's very useful for all our students you can see the blood sweat and tears that <laughs> yeah that. yeah <laughs> yeah okay so just going through your questions everybody okay P. Anders says, how do I preserve this? How long will it last? I think maybe, I mean, can we answer for the emulsion and the cream? What would we um, What would we say to someone, Beatrice? Well, we'll talk about preservation on lessons seven and eight, I believe. So just wait until then, where we'll cover all our questions, all your questions about preservation. That's yeah. what I'll say for now. <laughs> It's an important question to ask as well. And we have a lot of people wanting to kind of dip to that stage, but we are proud to preserve. We do, we do believe in it. Yeah. So thank you for your question. Yeah. Okay, we're going to wrap up in about five minutes, guys. So if you do have a question, please do let us know. And if you are re-watching this, um, wherever you're watching this from, if you please just add your question in the comments and one of our education team, I will lovingly ask them to go and have a look at the questions and see if we can answer it for you. So please do for to ask it okay so someone says is there a link for the jars that you show Lorraine uh I think I bought them from a company called Ampulla in the UK I often buy my um jars and bottles from them um they're a lovely supplier but you may not be in the UK in which case that is of no use whatsoever to you <laughs> so go and have a look near to where you live I mean there's loads of things you can get on Amazon there are lots of cookery shops that sell jars and bottles and pump bottles and all sorts of things so just go and see what you can find because when you first start out you're not buying thousands of units of packaging you're just buying a few here and there to, to use for yourself Great, fabulous. Minx has shared a lovely comment. She says, yes, FB schooling, here I come. Love it. We cannot welcome you, <laughs> wait to welcome you into the community. Thank you. So cool. Um, okay. Jody says, thank you for all of your knowledge. Jody, thank you so much for your participation. We have had thousands of people do these masterclasses and we, we can't do it unless people take part. It would just be us. <laughs> so we have to thank you as well. So thank you so much. 
also i just want to ask everyone watching i want to i want to know from you are you planning to become a formulator or do you want to start a brand so if you could just leave a comment in the chat and either write formulator or brand i'd love to see because i'm always fascinated to see where people want to take this exactly so it's always kind of split sometimes it sways one way or the other so it's yeah. always interesting to see that okay a lot of people saying they've got their equipment we've answered so many questions on here thank you so much for your questions there has been a lot of questions about substitutions but we will cover that we cannot answer every single individual question we would be here for about three hours but we do our best um okay all the all the answers are flooding in lots of both actually and lots of people going both brand formulator i love it these masterclasses are for you regardless of whether you want to become a formulator for, to formulate for yourself or start a brand. So just have fun with it. And I, I just love seeing everyone take part. So big, big thank you to everyone. Big thank you to everyone. And the whole point is to have fun with formulation, as we keep saying, is to just join everybody, like get involved in the community, post what um, results and failures you've been having in the Skincare Entrepreneur Mastermind Group. There is no wrong answer. We just want to see what you're up to. We want to see how it's gone. And we want to hear your feedback and hear from you and see how you found it as well. Because we have as much fun as you have as the masterclass as well. And don't feel overwhelmed. Like if you do take a look at our graduate page, which um, if people helping in the comments can share, there are so many people on there with brands because they started with the masterclass and then they thought, you know what, I actually want to do this for my life. And um, have formulation be a part of my life forever and I'm sure at one point they all thought how am I going to do this you know how am I going to learn and look at where they are now so please do go and take a look at that and I'm hoping yeah. um Janet and Eliziani or Sarah I think it is I can share that in the comments lots of great answers here formulator brand both Love both it. and there's no wrong answer it's all about your own personal happiness and about what you want to do as well so thank you so much definitely Okay, last question. This is a good one. So what do I do? Thank you, Jay Baines. What do I do if my formulation doesn't work? We've said it a couple of times, but what would we say to people who have just made their emotion? It hasn't gone quite well. What do they do? Try again and keep trying. It will come out as you will at some point. And don't give up and have fun in the process. Yeah, absolutely. And write it down, like Beatrice said. Yeah. If you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. <laughs> but honestly, just keep trying. It's it. Sometimes things don't work out the way you planned. Sometimes you they're just a dream. And you'll find this with all sorts of different formulations. You just have fun with it. And treat it as a little study project where you go, right, I'm going to try different, different ingredients, different percentages. Just have fun with it and have another go. Exactly. And for a couple of people at the end, kind of just sending last minute questions. If you've had any problems, you can't access the VIP area, anything like that, just email our team on hello at formulibotanica.com. We have a really dedicated, fantastic team in the help desk. They're answering, as Lorraine said, thousands of tickets right now to um, make sure you can all go through the masterclass. So please don't worry about sending us an email. And if you're watching this replay, please do add your question on and we will come to it eventually. Um, just want to look at a couple of these, look at these comments, formulator and then eventually own a brand. Thank you for the knowledge. Thank you so much. It has been an absolute joy. And thank you everybody for taking part. There's so many of you that have watched four of the lessons and we have our fifth lesson tomorrow where we'll be talking about botanicals. So the fun only goes up from here. So thank you so much for everybody for joining. It really is a joy. Absolutely. It's I think that might be it. Yeah, it's a real privilege to teach these masterclasses for you. So make the most of it. It's only here until May 2nd. You've got another, what, one and a half weeks? It's 10 minutes a day. Everyone has 10 minutes a day. It doesn't matter if you're traveling. It doesn't matter if you're at home. It doesn't matter where you are. You have 10 minutes a day. So just make the most of it. Commit to yourself that you're going to do this because Every single, I mean, you can't really see it because I'm on a small screen here, but I'm surrounded by graduate mm. products here from people who've gone through Formula Botanica's courses. Even this week, I received this giant box of goodies that I haven't even unpacked properly yet. Mm. It is so wonderful to see what all of these people have achieved. And all of them started with a masterclass like this. And that could be you too. So just throw yourself into it. Enjoy it. If you want to formulate along, please do. Don't beat yourself up. If you don't formulate along, just soak it all up and make the most of it because that's why we do this. We're on a mission to teach the world to formulate and that includes you. So come and take part in everything that we're putting out for free at the moment. 
Exactly. And if I could give anyone some homework, I know because I know everyone's at different stages, download your workbook, get your ticket, download your workbook, order your supplier kit, download your ingredients, just get everything as quick as possible because we don't want you to miss out. We really want you to take part in this masterclass. Don't feel overwhelmed. Just join the fun and join our Q&A too, which happens Sunday, 6 p.m. UK time. We will answer a few more of your questions and we'll get a little bit more technical for you. And um, we're here for you as you go through the entire masterclass. So yeah, we can't wait. Yep. And next week, I think we're doing an Ask Us Anything Q&A as well. Aren't we so we are. Be a bit of a free for all, I think. It's going to be a bit of free for all. But we have learned that you have so many questions and it covers such a wide area. So we just want to be there for you guys. So, yeah, that one will just be fun. Just just chuck everything in and we will do our very best to answer all of your questions. So thank you, Lorraine and Beatrice, for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry if we didn't get to your question, but we will try and answer it after this live. And thank you so much for your participation. And the fun starts here. Thank you so much, everybody. See you all soon. Enjoy lesson five tomorrow. Bye. Bye.